Mexico's largest rattlesnake. Now we're going to do Mexico's smallest rattlesnake coming up. Reading about it is an education of no value without experience. Learning must be experienced. It's experience that teaches the ability to educate by example with skill. Albert Einstein said, the only source of knowledge is experience. Welcome to Venom Central. Fierce, fascinating education. We've got two new Venom Squad members that are celebrating a five-year anniversary. Happy anniversary, Sherry and Christopher Winsky from Venom Central. Hey guys, before we get started, I gotta thank my supporters. Hey, happy birthday, Radic. Thank you for all your support, bro. Hey, we got two new Venom Squad members, Matthew Buck and Jason Anzaldo. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome to the Venom Squad. Hey, Len Brewer, Patrick Mullahan, Sean Black, Stephen Stewart Music. Thank you all so much. You guys are my rock. You guys are always there to support us, and we truly and deeply appreciate it. But let's get rolling with this video because we got some cool stuff coming, guys. Hey, guys. You know, last week we showed you the basiliscus and all the new babies, and, and they're the largest damn rattlesnake in Mexico. They're probably one of the largest rattlesnakes in the world. But today, I'm going to show you guys Mexico's smallest rattlesnake, the Mexican pygmy rattlesnake, the Crotus rabus. And... This is a mountain species, and it takes a special care requirement to, to actually keep them healthy and breed them. And we're going to hit on all that stuff. I'm going to tell you guys about captive care, temps, humidity, my breeding process. We've got a big female that's gravid. We don't know when she's going to drop them, but we suspect it's going to be in the next couple of months. But um, we're going to show you one of the little pygmies, and, uh, and we're going to talk about some interesting findings in the venom. And there's some... Big research going on right now with Crowless Ravis and Crowless Cytericus. So there's some cool stuff coming up, guys. Hang in there. We're going to jump right into the action. But guys, it wouldn't be a Venom Central video without some fangs in your face action. And you know what we've been doing? I've been using the Venom Cam on a lot of stuff, but I woke Dina up the other night. I go, come on, come on out to the Bushmaster room. I need you to film me doing some feedings. <laughs> but we did it. Now with the Venom Cam, guys. I did some of the feedings. I want you guys to see both angles of this and to show you just how we feed some of our Bushmasters and just how food aggressive they are. And we always feed them at night because that's when they're in feed mode. So there's some cool footage of me feeding some Bushmasters. And I'm rambling on talking about Bushmaster care and that also. But we're going to get into the to the Crowless Ravis stuff. And uh, man, there's some really neat stuff going on with Ravis Venom. And uh, I've been reading this stuff for, for months now, and it keeps escalating. They're finding more and more and more. It's really slick. Okay, guys, we're going to show you this little crowless rabus in the tub. I don't want to tabletop them and have them shooting off the table and hurting himself. Um, these guys are kind of squirrely. They're all over the place. and they're. This is a small mountain species of rattlesnake. And, and I'm going to tell you, um. We don't keep this species of rattlesnake like we keep our other rattlesnakes. Now, mountain rattlesnakes meaning that they come from a higher elevation. And coming from a higher elevation means that they need to be kept cool. So we keep them at a much cooler temperature. Now, my summertime temperatures for Ravis, for any of the mountain species. Now, I've bred a lot of mountain species rattlesnakes. I've bred banded rocks and model rocks. And uh, I've, just, I've bred a bunch of stuff. But these little guys, this is my first time breeding Ravis. But I'll tell you, um, we keep our mountain rattlesnakes. Look, he's looking at me now. He's a little stinker. And he is perpetual motion. Now, we keep these guys at our summertime temperatures. They don't get over 78 degrees. Never. We keep them rather cool, okay? And then they get a nighttime drop into the lower 70s. And then in the fall, we start weaning them down, and we let the temperatures get down into the, you know, low 70s until I ultimately put them in a brumation. Now, 
Last season, I literally put these guys in brumation with my Gila Monsters. I mean, I knocked these guys down into the mid-50s for almost four months. And that's where I just left them. And I checked on them once a month to make sure they had fresh water. And and, and I'll tell you, and, and it did the trick because I've got a gravid female right now. And now humidity with these guys, I keep their humidity kind of moderate. I mean, it stays between 60-70% humidity. But at nighttime, it will drop a little bit. In the daytime, it'll get a little higher. Because the room that I keep these guys in, I keep a lot of the Bothrop species. So the humidity is kind of high. But they seem to fare well with it. But these guys are an interesting little species. I mean, bites are rare, but there are three subspecies of this animal. But the interesting stuff that we're finding out about the venom comes from this one. It comes from the Curlus ravis. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But I just wanted to hit on some captive care stuff for you guys. Now, I keep these guys on newspaper and, and they seem to do well with it. A hide box and a water bowl. I keep them very simple. However, I am keeping my gravid female in a, in a bigger exhibit with a little rock outcrop in it so she can bask if she wants to and she can choose her temperature ranges. And I'll tell you, I mean, she's got a little hot spot of about 83 degrees and she very seldom uses it. She used it early on and now she doesn't use it. She stays in her hide box, which is at 78 degrees. She, she, she kind of likes it cooler. But these little guys do better at a cooler temperature. And prey items. I mean, if you guys have seen some of my past videos, we're actually redoing this video now because I wanted to reshare this information with you guys because they pulled the video because we had a live envenomation in that last video. <laughs> but prey items, these guys do well on just small white mice. But it's a slick little rattlesnake. They make really good captives. And I don't think there's a lot of people breeding them in the U.S. I mean, I don't know of too many people that are reproducing ravis. But um, but we'll have babies here probably by the end of fall. Now, this will be my first time reproducing Crowless ravis. And I've bred a lot of pygmy rattlesnakes, your Sistara species. Which these used to be Sistaras. Now, they're, 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 they're just lumped into Crowless. <laughs> but uh, I've got a lot of experience with, uh, with, with Sistaras babari and... Malarius malarius and Malarius streckeri and all of our little pygmy rattlesnakes here in the States. I've kept and bred them all in mass quantities. But just so you can guys get a look at this little guy right here. And this little fella is medically significant right now. Let me tell you, there is some neat stuff going on with the venom of the ravis. And we're going to talk about that here coming up. But get a good look at them, guys. The next one I'm going to pull out and show you is another male and he's a beast. This one is, he's an adult male, but I'm gonna show you the breeder male. He's a big old boy. Okay guys, and this is our other male, and he's actually kind of a kind of a big boy for a, for a ravis. Now, you know, this being a pygmy rattlesnake, this is Mexico's smallest rattlesnake, they're, they're not a large species. I mean, a big one might be, you know, 20 inches. 25 maybe 25 26 inches i don't know but i'll tell you something this one is a beast <laughs> he's a little chubby guy too he doesn't miss too many meals but this is my breeder this is the guy that copulated with my female and uh breeding these guys i kind of played with it and, and and let me tell you one of my secrets guys when i'm working with a new species the first thing i do is i look up their range i look up their weather conditions from where they come from and all this is available to you i mean literally you can look up the whole year's worth of weather in any location in the world you know so i study their weather patterns from where they come from and then i kind of adapt my captive care to their weather weather patterns you know and I, i'll tell you and these guys get they get a cold winter they you know because they're the high elevation so I put these guys through a nice long knockdown. I bred these guys like I would do mountain timbers. But breeding these guys, I'll tell you, I mean, I was stumped for a little bit. You know, I, 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 I hibernated them. I brought them out. I started feeding. You know, the males didn't want to eat. The female fed right away. And the males wouldn't eat. And I'm like, okay, it's, you know, it, it just may be that they're, they're, they're just in breed mode. I start moving that female back and forth in between these guys' cages. 
and they showed no interest in her. So one of the males finally shed his skin. After he shed his skin, he started eating. So I'm like, okay, we'll try him. Put him in there, nothing, <laughs> right? So I took that shed skin and put it in the cage with this big male along with the female. Nothing, I'm like, Jesus. So I finally thought, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these two males together with that female and combat them. You know, because a lot of times, rattlesnakes will combat and after they combat, of course, the subordinate male will get pushed off into a corner somewhere and the winner gets to breed the female. And that's an old trick I use with a lot of crotalids. And that didn't work. They showed no interest in each other. They showed no interest in the female. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing wrong? Well, turns out I had to wait for this male to shed his skin. He shed his skin. I put the other shed skin in with him and the female. And it was on. Within an hour, I had copulation. I'll have Dina put a picture there of these guys copulating. And the female, I mean, I don't know how long this gestation is going to be. But we ultrasounded her, and she has got babies in her. And now, as a rule, a lot of these mountain rattlesnakes, they have small litters, but they have big babies. The babies come out fairly large. I mean, I was amazed the first time I produced banded rock rattlesnakes. I only got three babies, but they were huge. And that's just nature's way. If you, there's not going to be a lot of them, they're going to be of good size, so they have a good start in life. But... Look at him. He's all over the damn place. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to put him on the floor and get in front of him and talk because he'd be all over the place. <laughs> but I'll tell you. Um, so I ultrasounded my female and she's five months in right now. And I can see perfectly formed babies in there. I mean, they're, they're, they're not ready yet, but she's gravid. And we're excited about this because this is going to be a new species for me. And anytime I breed a new species, that's, that's, that's an... That's what tickles me pink. I love breeding a new animal. But uh, look at him. He's perpetual motion. But that was the trick. I had to wait till they all shed out. And it just took time after brumation. It just took them a good month or so to get set into that breeding mode. But we got lucky and we hit on them. And we cannot wait for the babies to be born. And hopefully we catch it. We can video it. But... If we don't catch it in the process, guys, we'll definitely show you all the babies and the gook and the mess the way we do with all of our stuff. We'll show you the whole damn process. But uh, this is the Crowless Ravis. Neat little mountain species of rattlesnake and a medically significant rattlesnake. And we're going to get into that next. Okay, guys, speaking of babies, we're just going to show you one of the little baby basiliscus. And these things ain't even a week old yet. They've shed, and they've all eaten a small mouse. <laughs> they are just, they're little monsters. They are little beasts. Look at this little guy. Look at this lump in him. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. He actually took down, I'm not talking about a hopper mouse. He ate a small adult mouse. I mean, choked it down like it was nothing. I mean, immediately ate. Now, what's going to happen is, every time these guys shed, they're going to get brighter and brighter they're going to turn some will turn green some will turn yellow <clears throat> but they are just amazing little squirts but we don't want to stress them out too much we just want to give you guys a peek at them and they are just doing fantastic i'm sorry guys if i'm talking fast i had two red bulls tonight <laughs> and when i drink them red bulls i get wound up tighter than a cheap watch <laughs> let me tell you um the venom of the crowless ravis um, you know, it's it, it's comprised mainly of hemotoxins, but you know, I've been following this study on uh, what they're doing with the rabies venom, and I'm gonna tell you, it's it, it's pretty cool stuff. Now, the thing is, is you know, venom's comprised of proteins and enzymes, and it's and and different polypeptides, and the geniuses that do this stuff blow me away, <clears throat> and I keep up with all these studies. But let me tell you something. There is so much stuff that they're finding in venom right now. It's unbelievable. And the applications that they're thinking of using it for, it's, it's just remarkable. But what I find remarkable, especially in the radius venom, is they were able to pull a polypeptide out of this, okay, which actually has an antibacterial agent. 
Now, I'm not going to just show you a snake and, and then read this article to you so I put a bunch of big words so I sound really smart. I'm, I'm going to break this down to you guys face to face the way I understand it and the way I know it. There's a lot of different infections out there that are really resistant to antibiotics. Okay, and, and one of the big bacteriums, is, it, it, it's called Pseudomonas, okay? And there's a lot of different strains of Pseudomonas. And one of the stronger ones is Pseudomonas arginosa. And now this just lives in our environment, okay? It's a pathogen. It lives in our environment. It lives in the soil. It lives in water, you know, and there's different strains of it. And some of the strains of it can be deadly and are really resistant to antibiotics. And what we're finding out is that them polypeptides that they're extracting from the raises, from the ravis, can be applied in certain areas and it can kill this infection. And it's it, it's been proven over and over again in a lab setting. But I mean, simple things too, like, you know, um, sterile conditions in a hospital. A lot of people leave the hospital with an infection. Um, you know, secondhand infection from surgery, from unsterilized tools, not properly sterilized tools, or even dirty hands. Um, I mean, simple things, even like uh, unchlorinated pool water that's not chlorinated strong enough. You, you'll notice uh, some some youngsters will get like red eyes and, and rashes on their skin, and that's a form of pseudomonas. There's the boy with his drag bike. <laughs> He's going to light it up. Watch. You're going to hear him just crank on it. He does it every time he comes by. He wants me to come out and play. He wants me to get my bike out and run it up and down the street with him. <laughs> but anyways... Um, very simple things to very complex things. I mean, all you guys that wear, uh, you know, them, them long-term contact lenses and you get them irritated eyes and, and you get an infection in your eye, they get bloodshot, that's a form of pseudomonas. But what they're finding out is that some of the really strong bacterium, the actual live bacteria that causes the really bad stuff, the damn venom, what they're pulling out of it, that actual polypeptide is able to kill some of that live bacteria. And who knows, maybe here in the near future, I mean, that may be just a drug that you're gonna get at the pharmacy. I mean, literally, for, for a slight infection, or it may be even applied in a hospital setting because I know they're saying that it may work on different lung infections, it may work on uh, urinary tract infections. So that little snake just may be helping us big time here in the near future. It's really slick and this stuff just amazes me. And like I said, guys, I don't want to show you the damn snake and read this article to you and with a bunch of big words. And I'm gonna tell you something, I don't understand half them big words myself. I understand the way it's broke down though. I understand venom, but cool stuff guys. I mean, we're gonna pop some links into some of these articles and you can read this for yourself. I mean, it's amazing stuff, but just slick all the way around. And that's what we like to do is learn about what the venom can be applied as. And me, I'm just a guy that breeds the snakes and is interested in venom. And I'm working on a process right now. I'm hoping to finalize this thing to be able to get Bushmaster venom without necking them and hurting them and, and stressing them out and killing them. I'm, I'm devising a system here. I'm hoping to have it done soon where we can get them snakes to volunteer that venom on their own, where they'll do a strike and do a natural envenomation into something where I can open it up and take the venom out pure and clean. So, but anyways, guys, check out the articles, guys. Check out the links. It's cool stuff. Broaden your horizon and learn some things. <laughs> So guys, stay tuned because I fed some Bushmaster the other night. I drugged Dean out of bed. I go, come on, come out to the Bushmaster room. I want you to film these strikes. <laughs> and I'm in there in my t-shirt and my shorts. And I work in the Bushmasters in the middle of the night. And that's just what I do because that's when they're in hunt mode. But I want you guys to see just how food aggressive they are and how important that strike is and how important it is to be able to do it correctly. And it's awesome though. They come shooting out of the cages ram, to grab stuff. But, and then after that guys, we got like 12 minutes of venom cam, fangs in your face, action coming. So hang in there guys and have fun cause the exciting stuff is coming. Okay guys, 
I want to give you guys the other angle of this. You always get the Venom Cam feed scene, but I want you to just see just how food aggressive these little guys are. <laughs> little guys, this is a six foot Lachesis stenophrys. Lachesis stenophrys. Lachesis, I says. But uh, these things are something else, boy. Just talk about a heat seeking missile. He thermal bobbing all the way out there. That was cool. And he has got a death grip on that. You know, we always show you the Venom Cam feedings and you're always seeing it coming straight at you. I want you to see it from the other angle. Just a snake coming blazing out of there and you guys get to see all angles of this. But he's like, give me my rat wheel and quit messing with me. This is one of my little special boys right here. <laughs> all right, get in there, Bubba. Well, we're going to feed a couple of them like this for you guys so you guys get to see the, the full perspective of this. Let's close this guy up. And we're gonna jump down and feed another big one. Okay, guys, and we're gonna try to open this door without getting bit. <laughs> you couldn't see me, because this one is right up on the glass. And he look, here he comes. <laughs> He's gonna come shooting out of here. Here you go. Come on, buddy. Come and get it. He's locked and loaded. Oh! <laughs> oh, I love that. They are just heat-seeking missiles. What an amazing animal. And you know, feeding Bushmasters, I mean, especially ones of this caliber, you know, I mean, if you're not comfortable doing this, that's when an accident happens. That's where skill comes into play. You know, you can't read about this in a book and learn this. This comes with years of experience, you know. And it's just, it's such a dangerous animal, but it's such a fascinating animal that, that if you don't know what you're doing with these things, you shouldn't be fooling with them. And, and, and that's just, that's just the, that's just common sense. That's the truth. You know, you can't read about this stuff in a book and the thing, you know, the, the only, the only way to, to actually experience this is learning from somebody that actually knows what they're doing, you know, and it's just, um, it's, 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 this is a man snake. It's, this, this ain't snake for everybody. <laughs> okay. We're, we got one more on the bottom. We're going to feed for you. Okay, guys, and we've got one more little girl down here in the bottom, and here she comes. There you go. Come on, girl. That's a girl. And a girl. That is the ultimate, guys. That is the ultimate pit viper right there. Look at them eye shields come up and cover up that eye. That is so cool. But like I was saying about feeding these things and taking care of them, this is, a, this is an animal that you need to be experienced with. And you need to learn firsthand from somebody with experience. But uh, the Bushmaster, just a cool snake. <laughs> you know, for, for as big and as dangerous as these things are, and for, I mean, they're, they're so gnarly, they're so, they're, they're just so massive and they're so dangerous. They're so delicate. And they're also just, you know, this snake doesn't do well being necked and getting venom extracted. It just, you know, and there's a lot that people don't realize. I mean, we don't know a lot about Bushmaster venom because they can't keep them alive in the lab because people necking them and forcing venom out of them. It doesn't work with these snakes. They get so stressed out that they just drop dead. I mean, it's it's. I'm trying to come up with a with a system to get venom from Bushmasters. I've, I've been working on something for a long time. I'm trying to, to devise a system to get these snakes to voluntarily bite something and me be able to collect the venom without necking them and doing that. Because necking a Bushmaster can turn into a death sentence for a Bushmaster. And I've seen a lot of inexperienced keepers neck Bushmasters. And it's just, it's not good. They don't do good with it. They get stressed out getting handled too much. They'll blow their necks up and turn sideways and start blowing their bodies up. And they'll lay there and damn near look like they're dead. And they'll stay in that catatonic state for hours on end until they feel safe. And then they'll right themselves and move on. But it's just, there's so much we don't know about them. And I'm going to tell you, it's just, they're such a delicate animal. They really are a delicate animal, and there's, it's just, I see people necking them and doing stuff like that, even in the labs. I'm like, 
I know what's going to happen next. That snake's done. It's not going to eat again. It's, it's, it's finished. They'll get as many extractions out of it as they can. And then that's it. And that's it. They'll just go get another one, you know. I've been working on a system to actually try to get venom voluntarily. So it's a pure, better product out of Bushmasters, you know, because honestly, we don't know a lot about the venom. It's because they can't get a good sample because when they get forced into something, it changes the whole biological matter of it. It, it changes everything in that venom. It, it changes it. So we'll come up with it. I'll devise something and sooner or later, everybody's going to be like, yeah, that's the way to do it because that's that, that makes better sense. Just something we really got to work on. But I love my Bushmasters. Okay, guys, we're going to get some Venom Cam action here. We're going to try to make this strike sequence as natural as possible. All right, she's starting to breathe heavy. And I've got all this green stuff in the way. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> that was cool. Well, hopefully we got some good Venom Cam footage right there. And if you can you see here, now I got her boyfriend, he's over there on that side, way on the other side of the cage. And I'm going to slip in there and give him a rat. I'm going to color on these things. These kaboons are amazing. This is our big pair. But we're going we're gonna to try him next. Okay, guys, and this is one of our, our little sub-adult kaboon vipers. Oh, there's that sideways strike. This snake doesn't mess around at all. And the gaboons are an all-time venom cam favorite. They're enjoying their nice new big exhibits, that's for sure. Okay, guys, this snake's kind of at a weird angle, but I'm sure he's going to accommodate us. <laughs> he's going to come in at this thing sideways anyways. I'm going to give him a few taps, and let's just see if... Okay, he's aware. He knows there's a prey item in there. See if he'll do this sideways swipe. There it is. Oh, that was a neat strike. Wasn't that cool, D? That was a cool strike. That's a mouthful, huh, buddy? <laughs> I'm bumping these guys up in size now, too, with their prey items. Their heads are getting so damn big, I don't want them to hurt themselves. He's got a nice laid-out exhibit now. All kind of space. All kind of greenery in there for enrichment. He's got a little warm spot. He's got a big cool spot way over there. That's a very happy gaboon. He's got himself buried. Yeah, he's got himself find buried up. Find the gaboon. Find the gaboon. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and look, look at her. We're going to feed our, our brand new mama here. Oh, 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 oh that was... That was the money shot right there.
That was the money shot. She come a long way for that one. We'll see how that one turns out on the Venom cam. But there you go, big girl. Replenish, baby girl. We're going to need you to do what you did for us again last year. Or next year. <laughs> Very cool. And the thing, guys, our basiliscus, we've been breeding these things for a very long time. And, you know, we've got a group of big ones, but, you know, they're all beautiful. They're all nice light green or, or high yellows. And, uh, and, and we've kind of chosen the best out of the best to breed, you know. And we do this because we want big, strong genetics, you know, for color and size. That's why our basiliscus are monsters and are also beautiful. I mean, I've picked through my last 10 breedings over the past 20 years, the best of the best. So we can produce the best. Let me get that mulch off there for you, girl. There you go, girl. All right, I'm not gonna fool with you. Get out of here so I can eat. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna move on. She's going right in to eat it. Let's get the mouth open there. There you go. Okay, guys, we're going to feed our our little female. This is Rattlesnake X. Pull this girl open just a little bit more so we can get her in the camera. I pulled her out of the big exhibit and put her into this small tub just to... All right, guys, and since we're doing the gaboon today, I figure we might as well go ahead and do the puffs. They're about due for a meal. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Look at her. She's biting down so hard she's squinting her eyes. <laughs> that was cool. That was a hungry puff at her. <clears throat> and that's one of the gravid females. She is... I don't know exactly how close she is to having babies. Because you kind of never know the gestation with these things. You don't know if they've retained from the last season. Or if it's going to go from the breeding from this season. But... I've had them go anywhere between 8 and 12 months, so she could have these babies in the next two months, or she might not have them until the end of the damn year, like December. So we'll see what she does, but she's definitely got babies in her. I ultrasounded her, and she's full of babies, but it's up to them when they decide to drop them, you know, when the time is right for them, when their bodies can take it and they feel strong enough to do it. But, uh, all right, we're going to move over and feed the male. Okay, guys, now this knucklehead just struck the glass off a of camera. So, let's see if he's going to go ahead and pop a feed today. Yo, dude. There you go. Oh, that was a fast strike. That 
that was lightning fast. And for some reason, he never hangs on to him. The females seem to tend to hang on a little more than the males do. But he hit it. He's definitely going to eat it. This is one of my favorite puff adders. He is just electric when it comes to color. I'm sorry, guys. I'm moving this light around. I got a little light in my hand and uh, the venom cam and tongs in the other hand. <laughs> I'm multitasking. Dina had to go wash her hair. <laughs> But uh, he is gorgeous. These are Nam Namibian puff adders. I've raised these from little tiny babies. And we'll be having babies here again. Who knows? It could be anywhere from the next two to four months. Come on, do a fang stretch. Do a fang stretch, buddy. You're getting ready to do it. He's getting ready. He just, uh, he just maybe realigning things. <laughs> there it comes. There it comes. Ah, wah wah. He only did one. All right, guys. We're gonna move on and feed some more puff adders. Okay, guys. Let's get a feed into this other big old gravid female. This one, I believe, will be the first one to drop this season. She is massive. Okay. She's like, I'm hungry, but I'm not going to hang on to it. Hey, big girl. Line that up for you. But take a look at this snake. She is thicker than a damn bowl of oatmeal. She is full of babies. We ultrasounded her too. And literally, I stopped counting what I could see in the ultrasound at 30. So who knows? Who knows how many she'll have. But she is definitely massive. And she's going to drop a bunch of babies this season. Well, let's go over and feed her mate. Hey guys, I hope you liked it. Um, we have fun doing it, and it's a lot of work doing these videos, and I'm going to tell you something, but we love doing it, and we want to keep on doing it for y'all. But if you're new to the channel, hit the V logo and subscribe now, and come on back and check out Venom Central. This is Willie checking out. Later.